Hi folks, I found this digital caliper on GrabCAD. Let's download it, import it into Fusion 360, and let's go through some best practices on fixing some quirky things that are wrong with the model and getting the joints set up so that we can show the caliper actually moving back and forth. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I click Download Files. Over in Fusion 360, I'm gonna click Upload and I'm gonna drag, sure enough, we actually have an F3D file here, which means that this part was, I think, done in Fusion 360. So I'll drag it over to here, click Upload. I don't think we are going to get the parametric CAD data, which is okay. In fact, that's actually fine, what we're gonna show. Double click to open. So this is really common. When we open the file, the part of the, one of the problems is that I can drag stuff all over the place and it doesn't make sense because this is not what I want. This is not how I want to use this part. So I'm gonna just go to undo. And the first thing I want to talk about is do we want to be in parametric design mode? What does that mean? Well, if you notice in most of our Fusion 360 projects, like last week's Wednesday widget, we've got this design tree along the bottom, or rather history, and this shows the events that we did in CAD, and more importantly, we can right click and we can edit them. Well, the way Fusion defaults, it defaults in what's called direct modeling mode, which I don't like. I wish it didn't default into that, but if you right click, we could switch by doing the capture design history, and when we do that, you'll see I get these lists of uh, the timeline down here at the bottom. Now stay tuned, the next few weeks, we've got some really good videos coming out on why Direct modeling actually does have some pretty cool benefits, but most of the time I'd rather be in parametric mode or rather the mode where when you, this is what part of what's confusing is when you right click, if you see do not capture design history, that means you're in the mode of capturing design history, AKA parametric CAD modeling. If I toggle the caliper box, I can see that visibility, but I noticed the fixed jaw doesn't have anything in it. And if I toggle the body's light bulb on and off, the what appears to be the fixed jaw component is inside of bodies, and that's a mistake. It's actually important that we move it back into the separate component for, for us to get the joints working. So that's easy to do, just expand it. And if I click on it once, you can see I get the dashed underlines under which body it is. I can just drag it down here to the fixed jaw. We're so, done, now we've got it in the right place. I want to turn all of these off to see what this model looks like. So if I click on the first option, so if I click on digital panel, hold down the shift key and click on caliper box, I can now right click and say show or hide and that's going to toggle the visibility. I actually turned the box on because the box was off, so that's okay. Let's turn it back off. So now I can see just these two components. I'll click that, I'll click that. So what's left are some of these Interesting, what are these? These are the numbers. So they are bodies showing the inch units that are inside of uh, the parent. That's fine, I'm not too worried about those. So I'll click on the first fixed jaw, hold shift, click on the last guy, right click, show hide, and I'll turn the box off. I don't wanna see the box right now. So let's fix this whole part, the fact that I can drag all these things separate from each other. Assemble, rigid group. So what do I wanna put in that rigid group? I wanna put, if I hover over this, the digital panel and the bolt. They call it the compression screw here. So click OK. I've created under joints this rigid group. And if I drag the screen now, you can see it travels together with the bolt. Now I needed to also include in it a few other things. So I'll hit Control Z to move back to the same position. Right click on the rigid group edit, and what I can now do is hold the control key and add to it the bolt, the brass bearing, probably the top sword plate, nope, that was this thing over here, moving jaw, there we go, I've got those five, click OK, now if I move these, they all move as one, perfect, to create the, almost done, to create the joint to show these moving. Assemble, as-built joint. We can choose as-built joint over joint because the parts are modeled in place. So it recognizes that, that they're in the right place. It lets Fusion do a little bit more of the heavy lifting for us. Assemble, as-built joint. 
I already had mine set on slider, but I find it's easier to pick the type first. And then what are the components? Remember in Fusion, I wanna pick the thing that moves first and the thing that's sort of static or more important second. So I want the fixed, or excuse me, the moving jaw to move relative to the fixed jaw. So that's the order of operations. And then it says position. Well, for a slider, I think, sometimes struggle with this. I should just be able to click, say like that right there. See, it's got that kind of pointed reference. Oh, that's actually perfect. If it's not, you may have to change your axis and you can re-hit the play button to animate it. Now it's only showing the movable jaw moving, but because we created that rigid group, everything will move with it. So I'm gonna click OK. And if I move it now, the problem is that I move the whole thing. So what I've gotta do is right click on the fixed jaw, ground, so put, put a little tack pin on it now. Good, we're almost done. There's one more thing I wanna do. I wanna create a limit so that I can't go too far or too wide. So take a look. Hit I on your keyboard. I'm gonna zoom in and click this point and that point. Oops, this point and that point. Point two millimeters apart. Right click on your slider joint. That's the joint that allows these things to go back and forth. Edit joint limits. What's the minimum? That's that distance we just measured, negative 0.2 millimeters. What's the maximum? Well, even though it's uh, millimeters, I can just type six in for six inches. And then what's the resting spot? I can have the rest be one inch. Animate it, it's gonna go as far open as that. Close to there, perfect. Now what's so cool, I can't open it more than six inches, I can't close it more than that. And revert, oops. Revert, I don't know what resting does. I guess if we had some, will somebody tell me in the comments below what the resting position does? Oh, there you go, it kind of just snapped to it. There you go, that's cool. You drag it and let go, it moves back to there. Perfect, hope you guys learned something, hope you enjoyed. Stick around next week, I'm excited for the direct modeling videos. Take care, see you soon.